Today, the sermon topic is on death. Death is just as much a part of this life as birth is. Discussing the topic of death makes some people feel uncomfortable, but discussing and teaching on this topic is necessary. No one can escape death. What can people expect when it comes to death? What does God tell us on this topic? That's what we're going to study in the Bible scriptures today. Let's start. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 says, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. So let's go back and look at it. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 again. So here, God let us know there's a season. There's a time for everything. There's a time for birth, and there's a time for death. So again, no one can escape, escape death. And Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7 says, to let, uh, let us know that we as people, we are, uh, we, there's, there's, the day is going to come when we are going to die. And we, when we die, our body will return to dust. Our mortal body will, turn to, will return to dust and our spirit will return to God. So this, the word of God, let us explain to us what's going to happen. And we have seen it I know of it somewhat because we have had some loved ones who have already went to this, went through this uh, season. Season of being born and season of dying. Season of where their body turned to dust. Uh, some like uh, some may have turned to dust and uh, uh, passed away because they were cremated and their, uh, uh, and then you have the ashes turning to dust or whether it's a slower process and um, because they was buried and but their flesh, their bones, all of it going to turn to dust eventually. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses 42 and through 45 states, so it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown in perishable, it is raised in perishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. So each one of us, uh, as a human being, we have this flesh, this this perishable part of us, the flesh, and we also have a spirit which is um, imperishable that lives on forever. Every human being is made that way. Let's see what the Word of God says about those who die in Christ, those who are Christians who, die, who dies. John chapter 3, verse 16 so it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have, have eternal life. So those people who give their life to Christ, and when they die, they will not perish. They're, they're going to go, yes, through, through the same process as in their mortal body, this flesh, yes, it's going to die. It's going to die and turn to dust, just like the Word of God says. But the spirit man, the spirit that returns, because every spirit uh, returns to God, the spirit man of a Christian will move on to eternal life. A spirit man of a person who uh, was not a Christian, who disobeyed God, who chose to live a life of sin and to stay in a sin, that person, spirit man, will go to, will experience the second death, hell, the lake of fire. That person, so uh, that's the difference between someone who died in Christ as a Christian compared to someone who died and uh, they were disobedient to God and his, his word and they chose not to accept God's free gift of salvation. They remain a sinner. John chapter 14 verses 1 and 4 states, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe 
also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. So this is Jesus talking to his disciples. And he's saying, let them know that they have they have nothing to be worried about, nothing to fear. And he said, he was he letting them know his disciples, his children let him, he let them know to they believe in God, to believe in him also. And he said, he going to uh he going to a place, he preparing them, I'm going to a place to prepare for you. He said, My father's house, there are many uh, rooms. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he said, I'm going, if I'm going to prepare a place for you, that means I'm coming back for you. I'm coming back for you. He said, where I am, you're going to be also. And that deals with people who are Christians, people who are Christian, people who belong to Jesus Christ. They are going to experience, and their spirit man, they're going to experience eternal life. They're not going to go through the second death, which is they were uh, connected to hell and the lake of fire. They're not going to experience that. Romans chapter 8, verses 17 through 18 states, And if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that our present suffering are not comparable to the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expect, expectation for the revelation of the sons of God. So we who are Christian, we are children of God. We are heirs of God. We're co-heirs with Christ. So on, and as we live this life on this earth, there's some suffering we will endure. There's some suffering we will endure. But the word of God is known. But don't worry. The suffering that you endure for Christ's sake on this earth it's nothing in comparison and compare and compare when you want to compare it to the glory you're going to receive when you get to heaven. The glory that you're going to receive, the peace, the joy that you're going to receive when you get to heaven. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to have moments of joy and peace and happiness on this earth. Because we do. As a Christian, I have, I have moments of suffering and some moments of persecution. For Christ's sake, and that's part of the walk. But I also have moments of joy, happiness, blessings, may shower blessings and peace. But when when my flesh is done, so when I die on this earth, when I die, and my spirit may go to the next realm in heaven, there is no more pain, there is no more suffering. It's just glory. It's just peace. It's just happiness. I look forward to that. That is something we can, I promise that we can hold on to as a Christian. It's a promise we can hold on to. It can, it, it can help us endure and, and continue to be persistent in this race. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. So no matter what we go through, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. God will work things out for our good. And no matter how things look and how things seem on this earth, it is well. It's going to be okay. God is in control. Some things we don't understand, some things we're never going to understand, and it's okay. God is in control. And we need to keep our eyes on him and trust him and surrender things that we're worried about, we're concerned about to him. Surrender those things to him and put it in his hands and trust him with them. Isaiah chapter 57 verses 1 and 2 states, this is the Amplified Bible. Uh, it states, the righteous man perishes at the hand of evil and no one takes it to heart. Faithful and devout men are taken away while, up, while no one understands that the righteous person is taken away to be spared from, the, from disaster and evil. He enters into peace through death. They rest in their beds or graves, each one 
who walk uprightly, following God's will, living with integrity. So here God let us know. It's people, it's there are some people who don't understand, a lot of people who don't understand that sometimes God, sometimes God allows the Christian, the righteous person to die in order for them to be spared from evil. From be, to, to be spared from pain and suffering. Sometimes God will go ahead and take that righteous person from this earth. So in other words, God will allow that person to die just so he can spare that person from going through pain and suffering and other evil, and evil things. That's a blessing. That's a good God. But people don't see that and focus on that part of it. They just focus on why God let my son die? Or why God let my daughter die? Or why God let that good Christian person die? That person did this and this and this and all these good things for the people and for the community and, and, and help this person out and help people out. And, and, and why God let that happen? And, and especially if they die in an evil way. And because and, and uh, in God, in the word of God says, the righteous man uh, perishes at the hand of evil. So the person may die it may be a Christian who died at the hand of evil, some in a violent way. Maybe the person was shot to death. Maybe some horrific thing happened to the person before they uh, they was uh, they died. Maybe they was tortured. And they're like, "Why God allow that?" And 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 God let us know. And let me let me read it again. This uh, Isaiah fifty-seven chapter verse verses one and two. This is the NLT. This is how it, 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 they put it. They're translated. Good people, and it's talking about when good, righteous Christian. Uh, so good people. When I say uh, Christian, because we now know Jesus Christ is God. Uh, but uh, people who, when I say good people, people who honor God, serve the one and only true God, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, who is Jesus Christ, God. Good people pass away. The godly often die before their time, but no one seems to care to wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. For those who follow godly path, for those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die. God said those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die. God will allow his people, godly people, to die before their time to, in order to protect them from evil. That's a good God. That's why there are some godly people who die before their time because God has protected them from evil. That's a good thing. Now, we, the people who they leave behind, family, friends, maybe if you, you the, it, it may be hard for you to deal with you who is the child of that loved one. You who is the husband or the wife of that loved one. It may be hard for you to deal with not having your loved one here on this earth with you. But don't think about it from your perspective. Think about it from their perspective. Their, in their perspective, they're going to be glad to be in heaven where there's no pain and no sorrow and no suffering. They're going to be glad that God spared them from evil. That's a good thing. So when you're thinking on these things, make sure you don't think of it in a selfish way, just about for you and your own gain. And I understand, don't get me wrong, I understand you love your loved ones. You love them. You love them. And I know they love you too. But you got to understand and look at things from a bigger picture, from other perspectives than just your own. Look at it, the bigger picture, and don't just look at it from your perspective. If you do it that way, then you can find more peace because you realize God spared my, my mom with my mom from going through evil. My mom is not in a place where there's peace. She's at rest. That should be a, bring a smile on your face knowing that. So it's all about the perspective and what you're looking at it from. 
Matthew chapter 10, verse 28a states, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Because God, the, the word of God let us know that there's some godly people who die in an evil way. But God said, do not fear them. Don't fear those who kill the, can kill the body but cannot can kill the soul. Because those godly people who die, we as we read in Isaiah chapter 57, verse 1 and 2, those godly people who die, they're going to enter a place of rest and peace. They're not going to suffer anymore. God spared them from evil. Any more evil being done to them. That's a blessing. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 states, For our light and momentary affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory that is far beyond comparison. So it's a reason that we go through certain suffering. But know that our suffering is not in vain. Our suffering is not in vain. It produces in us an eternal weight of glory that is far beyond comparison. Psalm chapter 116, verse 15 says, Precious is the sight of the Lord, it is the death of his saints. God loves his children. The word of God says here, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for that these will follow them. People, godly people, people who die in Christ, they will rest from their labor. They're entering rest, peace. That's a good thing. God says, there are these who follow them. The God, of, the, these are the godly people who follow them. God gonna bless them for their good deeds. They're entering rest. And when you realize that and you think of it that way, that should bring you peace to know that your loved one who is godly, who was a Christian, died and is now into rest. John chapter 5, verse 24 states, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. See, when we die in this mortal body in our flesh, we enter death. That's the one type of death we enter because we no longer leave, live in this flesh of body. We no longer can breathe air in our lungs. We know, so this, this is a death we going to we experience in our flesh. But we who die in Christ, we enter eternal life. We enter eternal life. John chapter 11, verse 25 through 26 states, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We who are Christians will enter eternal life. We won't experience the second death, which is attached to hell and a lake of fire. Those people who do not choose Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they will enter the second death, which is a lake of fire. They will not have eternal life. So it's important for you, while you still alive and got breath in your lungs, it's important for you to take time to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and you are ready to give your life to him, then repeat this after me. Jesus I confess I've sinned and come short of your glory. Please forgive me my sins. I recognize, Jesus, that I need you. I need you. I want you, Jesus. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. Please accept me as your own. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me as your own. 
Please, Jesus, use your blood to cleanse me and wash me white as snow. Jesus, you said your word. If I confess my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I confess my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for cleansing me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me as your child. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you said that prayer and you mean it with your heart, with all your heart, you're welcome to the kingdom of God. You now continue to, you can, can, can continue to grow and study and meditate on the word of God. Continue to worship him. To get, continue to uh, establish that intimate, close relationship with him. Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. And you can look forward to seeing him in heaven one day. You can look forward to having eternal life. That only, the only comes through Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Let's continue to read scripture to see what's going to happen to those who died in Christ. Luke chapter 20 verse 36 says, For they cannot die anymore because they are equal to angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. We who are Christian, we who are godly people who die in Christ, we will experience eternal life. John chapter 8 verse 51 says, I tell you the truth. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. God says, anyone who keeps his word will never see death. And speaking of the second death, which is the lake of fire. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18 states, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive or are left with will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. God let us know in his holy Bible here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 38 through verses 13 through 18, what's going to happen to the believers who God just put these words in this holy Bible to encourage us to let us know. He said, brothers and sisters, I'm going to read some of them again. We do not want you to be informed about those who sleep in death, so you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. See, we who are Christians, we who are Christians, we who have loved ones who die in Christ, we who are believers, we have hope. We shouldn't grieve without, when we have our believers who die in Christ, believers who die, die in Christ to pass away. We should be grieving like those who don't have hope, like those people who have lost loved ones who they know on their way to hell or who they know were not Christians. We shouldn't be grieving like them. Because we know as believers, we're going to see our loved ones who are believers again in heaven. We know when, but we stay on the path of righteousness, continue to race this journey of life with Christ. We know we're going to make it to heaven, and we're going to see our loved ones who also made it to heaven. And we're going to spend eternal, eternal life together in heaven with Christ. And we're not going to have any pain or sorrow there. We're going to have peace and joy. And happiness. That's something we can hold on to. Okay, let's uh, read Romans chapter 14, verse 8. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Acts chapter 20, verse 20 through 24 states, You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. That's the attitude we as Christians should have. I consider my life, which I'm going to read it again, verse 24. I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. That's what Romans chapter 14 verse 8 is referring to. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. No matter what we go through, we're doing it for the the sake of Jesus Christ. See, our life is not our own. When we become Christian, when we truly trust God and give our life to God, our life is not our own. We are God's vessel. We are to do his work and do his will. That's our heart desire should be. So we should desire to complete the task, finish the race and complete the task that God called us to do. No matter what hardship we may face, prison or whatever hardship we pray, who we may face, some Christians are going to face a hardship of dying an evil death. But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Because they died in Christ. And God has protected them from evil. God has protected them because He don't want them to go through any more evil. So and He's giving them rest. So he takes them from this earth early before they before their time to give them rest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians chapter 1, verses 20 through 26. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. What shall I choose? Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to, to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith so that th through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ will abound on account of me. So here we see the man of God to try to determine, should I continue? Should, part of me is, is ready to be in heaven with Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, with that peace and, and joy and happiness. And, and but part of me, uh, uh, feel like I, I still, got God, still got work on this earth for me to do. And I want to do that and obey him. He says, sometimes, but you know, he talks about sometimes I'm torn. I'm torn between going ahead and going to heaven to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, which is far better than living on this earth. Far better than whatever I have gifts and bless I can see on this earth. Being in Jesus Christ, being in heaven with Jesus Christ is way far better. But he died, nonetheless, basically saying, let God will be done. If it's God will for me to remain on this earth in his body to do his work, then so be it. Let it be done. If it's God will for me to be in heaven with him, so be it. Let his will be done. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. I'm sure what we are suffering now cannot compare with the glory that will be shown to us. Amen. I'm sure. Psalm chapter 73, verse 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So no matter what happened to me in his flesh, in his body, 
and what I'm suffering to have to do in this, endure in this body, my strength comes from Jesus Christ. See, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 and 8 states, So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we who are, we who are Christian, we understand that there's glory that awaits us in heaven, that there's no pain and suffering in heaven. And we look forward to that day when we can get to heaven and be our Lord Jesus Christ forever. That's something we as Christians look forward to. That's something we as Christians look forward to. So you, loved ones, who have Christians who already left this earth, know that they look forward to being in heaven with Jesus. They desire that more than living here on this earth. Not to say they didn't love that, they love the loved ones they have here on this earth. Like me personally, I love my kids. I love my family. I love the ones God has brought into my life to be a blessing to me. I love them. And I thank God for them. And they're the ones who make this life joyful because I have them to share this life with. But I love my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I do love and look forward to the day I'm going to be in heaven with him. I do love and look forward to that day. And when that day comes, I'm going to be rejoicing and I'm going to be happy. Because I know I'm going to be at rest and I'm going to be at peace. And I would say for, for my loved ones, I would want them to know, be happy for me. Be happy for me. Push past your own grief. Push past what you're going through and be happy for me. Be happy for me. Stay on the right path of righteousness. Stay on the right path of righteousness yourself so I can see you in heaven one day too. So we can share eternal life <clears throat> in heaven together. See, if you stay on that path of righteousness in Christ like I did, then you'll join me and we'll be able to see each other again in heaven. And we're being, being able to enjoy heaven together. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. So I do want to give, uh, share a few scriptures, a word of encouragement for the ones, the loved ones who left behind when they have a, a, a Christian who died and they are left behind on this earth, still living. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1 says, God is our refuge and our strength and very present help in trouble. So you, if, you are loved, if you are a loved one who grieving over the loss of your mom, your dad, a sibling, a best friend, someone that was close to you, any loved one, and you're having a hard time dealing with that person's death, and that person is a Christian, then know you. If you haven't already given your life to Christ, no, you can give your life to Christ too. And you can turn to God and allow God to be your refuge and your strength. Allow him to be your help. Allow him to be your help. Allow him to be your help. He the only one who got all power and authority. He the only one who would never leave you or forsake you. He the only one who's not limited, limited to this body. This flesh, this immortal body. He's on one not limited that this mortal body or any other limitations. Anything and anyone else has limitations. Jesus Christ, who is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Alpha and Omega, he has no limitation. Trust and depend on him. Philippians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. I have no one else like the Lord of Lords, like the great I am, like the God of Abraham, like Jesus Christ, 
who will show genuine concern for your welfare. Trust in the one and only true God, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the great I am, Elohim, Alpha and Omega. His name is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus Christ. That's the one and only true God. That's the God of the whole entire Holy Bible. He's the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. He's only one God. If you don't understand that, study the scriptures. Study the scriptures to see. I have a Bible study on it on my website. You can go and study the scriptures with me. Search those scriptures. You can visit my website, www.blessingsinbreakthroughs.com and see those scriptures. Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. Blessed are those who moan, for they will be comforted. Psalms 34, verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Psalms 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So if you want the God who will strengthen you, that will help you, will uphold you with his righteous right hand, then you need to accept that God, Jesus Christ, is your Lord and Savior. So if you don't know him, choose him as your Lord and Savior. I, t I said this in a prayer with you already in this episode. If you haven't said it, say it and mean it with your heart. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 31 and 32 says, For the Lord will not reject forever, for if he causes grief, then he will have compassion according to his abundant love and kindness. God will show compassion according to his abundant loving kindness. See, there's some things that may cause us grief. But God has a good, God has good plans for us. It may cause you grief because you lost a loved one you were ready to let go. But the loved one who died in Christ, it's rest and peace and joy. That loved one who died in Christ is happy. The happiest he or she can be. And that loved one who died in Christ is happy to be in heaven with Christ. It's you who have to deal with your, your grief and allow Jesus Christ to help you. Allow him to have compassion on you. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 states, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying a pain for the old order of things will pass pass away so just know according to the word of God in Revelation there's going to be a time when no one will experience pain and sorrow anymore no one will experience pain and sorrow that's a blessing so one day God is going to wipe away every tear There'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. So, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for being a good God and a merciful God. Thank you, Jesus, for preparing us for what's to come and preparing our loved ones for what's to come. Help us see your goodness, your love, your compassion, in spite of whatever may come our way and may whatever may come the way of our loved ones. Help us deal with things, Lord God. Help us see things beyond our own perspective, Lord God. Help us trust you, Lord Jesus. Help us surrender our life to you, Lord God. Help us stay on the path of righteousness all the days of our life, Lord God. May you show us your mercy. May you help us endure. May you help us continue this race in you, Lord Jesus. Now and forever. We bless your holy name, Lord Jesus. 
we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.